Hey family, Jesse Colon here, missionary to Mexico, and I'm recording this video today in front of my hotel where I'm staying in Los Mochis, Sinaloa, a 12 hour drive from where my wife and I are ministering in Jerez, Zacatecas. We're in the center of the country in Zacatecas, and we drove north west to go to Sinaloa and uh, that's where we are today and let me just share with you guys what we're doing here and then I want to share a quick devotional with you guys to just share what I see the Lord wanting to do through through us who know him and uh, what he's wanting to be able to accomplish in, in those that that are in our circle of influence so let me just share first of all uh, my branch channel that I have on YouTube has now grown over 7,500 followers but uh, I do share my devotionals on Sunday as often as I can, maybe three, four times uh, a month. Sometimes I'll miss, but I, I've really seen the Lord's hand in that. There's been times where I've put my YouTube channel on the altar before the Lord, and I said, Lord, is this something you want me to keep doing? Uh, and uh, every time I, I do that, He has me double down. So we now have an employee that I pay with the YouTube proceeds. Uh, and he's a brother in the Lord. He's one of the young men that minister at our church with us. And so now he's able to come on staff full time to edit our videos for the church and the church's YouTube channel and put all our media content out there as well as edit for my ranch channel. And it's uh, Rancho Cinco Talentos. It's all in Spanish, but I'll just put that out there. It's uh, very interesting because I'll share about cattle and our methods that we're doing. I'll do interviews with other uh, ranches, but, but I'll share the gospel and I'll share devotionals on the weekends. And so, so again, going back to the channel and what I've seen the Lord do with it is that uh, last year in September, we had a pretty heavy drought and affected just all the ranchers in, in most of Mexico. And so, uh, you know, I just started to pray on the channel and invite people to, you know, pray for the situation and pray for rain. And so I decided to share a devotional to inspire and uh, I kept doing it and I get good response. Obviously it doesn't get the amount of views that a, that a cattle video would get, but uh, you know, we'll still have on any given Sunday, a thousand people watch our devotionals. And so I just kept it up. And uh, that started around September last year, perhaps 2023, August, September. And so I got a phone call from a pastor at Calvary Chapel here in Los Mochis, Sinaloa, a sister church. And he said, hey, Pastor, do you have a YouTube channel? And I said, uh, yeah, because it's about ranching. I go, yeah, that, that's my channel. And he says, well, I have a family that started coming to church last month. And uh, they found us because they started watching your YouTube channel. And they've been watching your devotionals for a few months. And they just looked up uh, Calvary Chapel and, and we're four minutes away from their house. And so they started coming. And I just wanted to thank you for, for what you're doing, encourage you. And I want to invite you. And that was back in December, and I said, all right, sounds sounds good. It's a 12-hour drive away, so I'm like, yeah, yeah, invite me, <laughs> you know. And finally, you know, after two or three conversations with the pastor here, he he told me, you know, maybe, maybe you want to come and baptize your disciples. So I said, you set a date, and I'll be there. And so here we are. <clears throat> we drove on Friday. We're going to be here Saturday, Sunday. Today I'm sharing with their church. At 11 a.m., it's 6.30 in the morning, I'm recording this devotional before it starts getting hectic here. But anyways, uh, I'll be sharing here today, and then I'll be driving back down south towards Zacatecas. I'll stop in Mazatlan, share at a church planting class there in Mazatlan with the sister church there as well. And so it's just a blessing to see how the Lord's been using that channel to, to minister. You know, it's also a provision to... Give a, a young man who's who's called into the ministry an opportunity to be on staff with us at our small church in Jerez. We'd never be able to afford to have somebody on staff, but with the YouTube channel, it's it's been uh, a means in, into which the Lord is doing that. So I want to ask you to pray for our YouTube channel, Rancho Cinco Talentos, and that's from the parable Five Talents. That's where I got the title to name my ranch. Um, and uh, so pray for our channel and pray for the circle of influence that we're able to have through YouTube. And uh, we're reaching people who otherwise wouldn't be hearing the word of God. And so I want to ask you for that. Continue to pray for our mission here down in Zacatecas. Uh, a lot of cartel violence going on right now, kind of stirring up. And it's been very peaceful these last few months. And it just seems to be kind of stirring up again. But, you know, we're confident the Lord where he calls. 
He guides, He provides, He protects. And so we're going to continue to do what the Lord called us to do. But I do want to ask for your prayers. So um, let me let me share with you guys what I shared with our church last week and just how it's been speaking to me this morning um, as I continue to look at into it. It's the call of Levi or Matthew in uh, the Gospel of Luke, verse 27 of chapter 5. It says, after that, he went out and looked at a tax collector named Levi sitting in the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. And he left, left everything behind and got up and began following him. And Levi gave a big reception for him in his house. And there was a large crowd of tax collectors and other people who were reclining at the table with them. The Pharisees and the scribes began grumbling to his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered and said to them, It is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous to repentance, but sinners. Wow. So I want to look at the response first of, of Jesus' enemies, the Pharisees. I want to look at the response of the sinners, those tax collectors. And I want to look at Jesus' response. First of all, Jesus' enemies, you know, they couldn't see anything that he was doing good. They wouldn't uh, be grateful that these tax collectors were repenting. A little bit of historical context, if you don't know. The uh, people of Israel at that time were under Roman rule, so they paid taxes to the Romans. The Romans didn't collect the taxes themselves. They contracted out. They would hire other Jews to tax their own people. And so those who had taken those jobs, uh, very lucrative jobs, but they were seen as traitors by their own people because they were doing the work of the enemy, the Romans who had oppressed them. And so for the Pharisees, they saw them as traitors. They saw them as sinners. And, and they most, they, they, most of them were, of course, they only taking those jobs because of the ambition. They didn't care about betraying their own people. They didn't care uh, about all that came with that. So they usually were very, very egotistical, ambitious, sinful people. And uh, they came to Jesus, the Pharisees, and criticized him for what he was doing. And there are going to be some religious people that we can never do anything right. Um, there's always going to be, even amongst our own ranks, brothers and sisters going to say, what are you doing that for? What are you doing this for? And, and Jesus was determined on fulfilling his mission. And I think that when we keep that as a center and the purpose, the motive that drives us, our methods that we'll use, maybe other people will criticize. Hey, what are you doing a YouTube channel for? What are you going there? What are you busy getting anxious for? You're wasting time. Get yourself in the church. But, you know, they're just going to be those people you just can't please. And uh, that was their response. They criticized and they questioned. Right? Now, next we have the sinners. What was a sinner's response? Jesus called Levi also known as Matthew, he told him, follow me. That's all he said. Now, Levi must have known of Jesus's miracles and his ministry, might have heard his teachings before. But to have that opportunity to follow after a rabbi, one that was up and coming, one that was stirring up the people, one that was controversial, but his, his, his message is hit to the heart. Having that opportunity, Levi left everything. He stood up and he followed after Jesus. Notice the action, the response required by the sinner. He had to get up, he had to leave behind the sin. Cannot serve two masters. We cannot call people to add Jesus as a supplement into their life. We have to call people to repent, to leave, and to cleave to Jesus. And so that's what we see happen to Levi. And not just that, not only did he make that decision to repent and to follow after Jesus, he called all his friends together. He had a banquet for Jesus. And, and that's also something very common when Jesus gets a hold of our heart is he usually begins to use us right away to call others to follow Jesus as well. And look at Jesus's response. He says, it is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous to repentance but sinners. Jesus had that motive. He's calling sinners to repent. And his method was, you got to be among the sick. You got to be where they're at. And people might question his motives. People might question his methods. But Jesus knew what his mission was. And when you know what your mission is, you have to fulfill that mission to please God. You're not going to look to please people. You're going to look to be effective. You're going to be sensitive. And I believe Jesus was led by the Spirit 
his entire ministry to follow the will of the Father and leave us an example, a pattern to follow after. Now, if we are not yet cemented in our faith, circling ourselves with sinners might be something very risky, something that might call us back into attention. But as we grow and mature in our faith, we can come to the ability to be able to be among to be an influence on them, not to be influenced by them, but to be influenced or to, to influence them. And so that's what Jesus was. To the pure, all things are pure. For him to be around the publicans, the sinners, the tax collectors, he was to be an influence on them. And he would show his disciples as well. And it was Levi who went and called more sinners, right? And so we see that. And just a beautiful example here that we have on how to keep our mind on the mission, to call sinners to repentance. And just in case you were curious, there are no healthy. <laughs> Jesus was telling these Pharisees because they thought they were healthy. They thought they were fine. They thought they were walking correctly before God, although their hearts were so filled with prejudice, self-righteousness. Jesus said, you're like empty tombs. You're whitened on the outside, but you're filled with bones on the inside, not empty tombs. He's called them uh, whitewashed tombs. And so uh, look at, we see that there's going to be the religious, they're going to criticize, there's going to be questioning, but there's going to be those who repent and follow after. And so we just need to keep our minds on our mission and may our methods be effective for the glory of God. May he receive all the glory, honor, and praise. So if you allow me to close in prayer, I want to encourage you guys just to keep your mind on the mission. Whatever methods that you use, may you take them before the Lord, even if others criticize, if they are, I guess, motive, mission driven, may God be glorified in, in them, right? So let's, uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just wanna thank you, Lord, for the opportunity my wife and I have to minister here in Los Mochis, Sinaloa. I pray your blessings upon all that we do here and back down in Mazatlan. I pray that you would be glorified and continue to minister to hearts and to lives, Lord. Uh, bless us, fill us with your Holy Spirit, and use us, Lord, as instruments in your hands. I pray for my brothers and sisters that may be watching this video, that they would be encouraged, Lord, that they would be examining their circle of influence. Maybe they've uh, put themselves in a bubble instead of a circle of influence. I pray that you encourage them to take a step out and uh, be emboldened to reach others for Christ Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that you would continue to strengthen us in our walk, that you would keep us from temptation, that you would keep us following after that mission that you've given us, that great commission you gave to all those who know you, is to share you with others, that they too may enjoy that forgiveness and eternal life that you give us. So just bless my brothers and sisters, Lord, I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Thank you very much for following the channel and uh, I encourage you to subscribe and like and I, I, I do plan on making more content. It's been a little slow coming because I do focus on the channel in Spanish, but I'm looking to create more content, maybe a little missionary vlogging as well, show you guys where we live, where we minister, and just to get you guys a little glimpse of the missionary life down here in Mexico. My name is Jesse, missionary to Mexico in Jerez, Zacatecas. Thank you for watching this video.